going to be in, in 2023. It's, it is a new year, and uh, and we are thankful for God giving us that, that new year and giving us this time. But I, I think of this moment, this you know January of every year. Of course, we've been walking with the Lord, a number of us, for a number of years. Um, but every year, you know, I mean, at this juncture in our life, you know, my wife was telling Brother Mike, you know, we were we went to bed at ten o'clock, you know, it's like what I don't need to see any ball drop. That's right. I don't need any bubbly or anything uh anything like that. Um I'm just thankful to be able to lay down my head at night and be at peace. And there's a lot of things that you can read online, a lot of stuff that you can uh, stories that are being told. I mean, you, you scan the headlines and it's almost, if you let it, it's almost depressing when you see the plight of people. And many of these people do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. They have no, uh, no walk with God. Um, and it, it saddens me that, you know, as you said, Brother Bobby, we have the answers. Mm -hmm. He has the words of eternal life. Yes. And sometimes even those of us that walk with him, we have a tendency to take him for granted. One of the things that I posted this morning was, uh, I don't want to take God for granted. That's the truth, preacher. Amen. I don't want him to become That's so true. Uh, common, take him for granted. common with me. You know, we know how to pray. We know how to go through the motions of worship. We like the songs we sing. And if we're not careful, they can all become common to us. Mm -hmm. And I guess to a degree, Brother Dominic, as human beings, the commonality of life, it, it, it's almost a given. You know, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you do this, you do that. And it's, it's really, I don't think there's much you can change in that commonality of everyday living other than your walk with God. Your walk with God can change. Uh, I have found through life sometimes that I have allowed the busyness or the commonality of life. Um, I looked at it as saying, well, I, I've got, got to get this done or I've got to get that responsibility done, etc., etc. And it has hindered me from um, maybe spending the kind of time in prayer that I wanted to, to spend time in. You know, trying to squeeze this in, trying to squeeze that in. And... Um, I just don't know that as 2023 unfolds and God, I know God is a God of change. There's no doubt in my mind. But I think of the commonality of our human nature in our acceptance of that commonality has a tendency many times to bring God down to our level. Yes, we love him. Yes, he is faithful. Yes, we believe what he's capable of. But sometimes the commonality of being human takes away from, from the, the awe of who he is. And we can even get so used to his presence, brother, we don't even recognize it anymore. Uh -huh. And I'm, true. I'm convinced that the deeper we get into the last of the last days, the more of a hunger we need to have and the more of a thirst we need to have for the things of God. No matter how many times you, you've heard the word or no matter how many times you've sang the song, no matter how many times we, we gather, I pray that it never becomes just a common thing that we do, but there's expectation and excitement that maybe, just maybe, will be the day that God reveals this to me or that to me or... Uh, there'll be a, an outpouring of the Spirit that we've never experienced before. Yes, yes. You know, if, if God's Spirit fell on you right now, would you respond to it? Would you be able to just let yourself loose, whether it be to dance or whether it be to shout or whether it be to run? And, yes. and you know, we, we sadly have said those things are the things that kind of confirm whether God's in the house or not. Really, when you think about our worship, our lifting of hands, uh, our moving around, our moving back and forth, our lifting our hands and our 
our shouting and our singing, that was Jewish worship in the Old Testament time. Yes. And they didn't have the Holy Ghost. So, right. you know, we, we've right. just copied what they've done. That's right. yep. But with the Holy Ghost that's inside of us, the scripture mm -hmm. says that if you believe in him as the scripture has said, yes. then out of your belly would flow what? A river of living water. And praying in the Holy Ghost, being refreshed by the Holy Ghost, being touched by the Holy Ghost. Yes, as, as a man, I, I feel the goosebumps and the, the tickle upon my spine when I'm in his presence. I, 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 I cry, I, I shed tears when I'm around him. Yes, amen. But I never want to, to take him for granted amen. or just assume that because I'm feeling this way that this is how it's got to be or this is how it is. Mm -hmm. I hope... I, I'll never, you'll never understand God. You will never, there is a, a, an aspect of him, he, he has ensured that we'll never figure him out. But he's given us glimpses in his word that says, and we know that all things uh, work together for good. So as it's been said, even though we go through things that cause pressure in our lives and sometimes pain in our lives, we know that God uses everything, and for that I'm, I'm thankful and I'm grateful. But as I was thinking this morning, uh, as we've stepped across into the, the 2023 zone, the calendar says that it's here, there's, we can't go back to 2022, there's nothing we can change in 2022. Oh, it seems like it's the same. We woke up this morning in the same place. We probably did mostly all the same stuff that we, we do every day or maybe on Sundays, but nevertheless, it, um, it was the same. Mm -hmm. In Joshua chapter 3, the children of Israel are getting ready to lay claim to the promise that God had given Abraham many, 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 many years prior to the event taking place, prior to this happening. And, of course, uh, many of us that know our Bible know the story of how uh, Israel, when, they, when, uh, when Moses had died and Joshua got the, uh, the charge to, uh, to lead the people of God, uh, in jo Joshua chapter 1, if you remember where the Lord uh, told him to, he kind of confirms, and I love the way God confirms things in our life. Because if God ever confirms things, stuff to you, Fine. you know, you might be doubting and somebody might text you or send you a word and, or just you're reading the word and it jumps out at you. And God just say, hey, hello, I'm here. And he said to Joshua, he, he said, just, just remember one thing. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And the, the devil is working overtime to really neutralize the church relative to who who we are the 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 concept of the 10 spies that went into uh, the promised land and spied out the land and then came back and said oh man there's giants there and uh and the, and the sons of annika there and man we and the scripture clearly lets us to know that they had this feeling that they were grasshoppers and therefore because they were grasshoppers, that they couldn't do anything. They couldn't conquer the land. And they convinced, how many? Ten, ten individuals that came back convinced the whole rest of everybody there that there was no way that they could claim the promise of God. And trust me when I say, the adversary in this hour is working overtime to convince you that God is not who He says He was, that He can't do what He says He can do, and he will do everything in his power to get you to doubt God, to get you to, to lose faith in his word, faith in spending time in prayer, uh, faith in applying the Christian disciplines in your life that will keep you and preserve you until that day he returns. And when he said to Joshua, you know, be strong and be of good courage. I think you get down to Joshua 1 and 8, he says, be strong and be very courageous. God, didn't, God doesn't play games with us. God doesn't hold things Amen. back from us. I know we spend a lot of time trying to figure Him out. We spend a lot of time trying to connect the dots, if you please. But, you know, if God says it in His Word, we don't need a, a dissertation, a breakdown of this, that, or the other thing. If He says it in His Word, we need to believe what His Word says. And yes. the Word of God, I'm convinced, is simple enough 
for you and I to understand. Come on. Yes, there's a depth of study, Hebrew, Greek, uh, searching the Scriptures. The Bible clearly tells us, study to show ourselves approved unto God. But there's enough of God's Word that you and I can grasp and you and I can understand when it comes to uh, that relationship that we have with Him. And, and can I say something, folks? He doesn't need any of our help. That's right. That's right. Boy, he doesn't need any of our help. And he said to Joshua, if you'll just stay true to my word, as I was with your servant, as I was with Moses, I'll, I'll be with you. And he gave him the, the dictates, if you please, or the mandates relative to them maintaining their relationship with God. Keep the word of God before you. Meditate on it day and night. Teach it to your children, etc., etc., etc. And he said, if you do this, then your way will be prosperous and your way will be, you'll have good success. I found that to be true. Amen. Hello. I have found that to be true. That if we're faithful to him, he will be faithful to us. Amen. I might never be a millionaire, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging for bread. Thank you, Jesus. My life, Sister Doty, has been blessed, extremely blessed. Yes, sir. God is faithful. He's faithful to His Word. Amen. And if you and I will just hold on to the Word of God, the Word of God is designed that you can be stripped of everything. You can, you can be stripped of everything, of who you are and, and everything that you have. And that Word of God is designed to hold you in place until such a time as God changes the season. That's just how He does it. We get comfortable when we, uh, without pressure. We get comfortable in the normalcy of life. But God is a God of promise, and He's a, a God of expectations. And, you know, we're, we get to chapter 3, and Joshua, uh, man, he's ready to go. And he, uh, he begins in, in verse 1, Joshua chapter 3 and verse 1. Praise God. Mercy. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 1. Joshua rose up early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. So there was a, a period of time, there was three days that they had to prepare themselves. The scripture says, and we quote it often, it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We, we don't like waiting. I don't like waiting. If you like waiting, wave your hand. <laughs> you know, none of us like to wait. Especially if we want something, man, I've I got to have it right now. I want an answer right now. And, and I, I've got to wrestle with it. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. There's times I've got to wrestle with uh, this, whatever I'm expecting, and, and I want an answer, and you know, my going through, uh, my father passed away in March of last year, and of course we had to go through the probate uh, with the property and everything else, and I, I thought, man, you know, he's not one, and he wasn't wealthy, it's only my sister and I, this should be one of the easiest things that there is, and nine months later we're still waiting for a decree from the court. Well, praise God, it happened last week, and the court, it's a court, case is closed, we're just waiting for... Uh, the, the original documentation to come from uh, the court and uh, it's like oh thank you Lord you know but in that process I kept trying to say Lord I give this to you Lord I give this to you Lord I give this to you and uh, you know what I'm talking about because I know every one of us have been there oh, man I want an answer and I want it now and you try to give it to Jesus and it somehow you start praying and it pops back up again and you got to wrestle with your thoughts and grab the Word of God and, and hold on to the Word of God but the Bible says if you wait upon him If you wait upon Him, yes. if you learn yes. to wait on God, it's a place of safety. Amen. Hello? Amen. 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 Yes. Anxious people that don't wait on God, I've seen it through the years, they've made decisions, they've convinced themselves that God told them to do this or do that or go here or go there, and they didn't wait yep. for that open door, yep. or they didn't wait for God to give them clear instruction. And they went ahead, and God, my friend, hear me, God will open the door that is supposed to stay closed if you bug Him enough. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. You ever tell your kids no, and they didn't want to take no for an answer? And they just kept whining or pushing. Or... You finally just said, all right, all right. And you gave in to them. 
God does that to us. Yes, He does. And yes, he if does. we just wait upon Him and renew oh, our Lord. strength, and God has been trying a very, very long time to get many of us to move out of the place that we've been in a very, very, very long time. And in 2023, as he begins to lay out the final parameters, if you please, or portions of the parameters of these end time events that are going to unfold, he has an expectation of us. And his expectations of us are a lot higher than our expectations of him. We don't have God figured out. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. It doesn't mean we can't have His thoughts and we can't walk in His ways. But when He does things, when He allows things, many times they are foreign to us. Many times they contradict what we think they should be or how things should go. And, and we say, well, I'm blessed of God. It's like this uh, physical challenge that I have. It's easy for me to say, but Lord, your word says by your stripes I'm healed. I should be healed. Lord, your word says that you were wounded for my transgressions. You're bruised for my iniquities. And, and I have come to the conclusion, Brother Bobby, that for right now, God has chosen not to heal me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I can say that. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me, uh, can I pray for you? And I said, well, God has chosen not to heal me, but... You know, you can pray if you want. That, that's fine. But you say, well, that's kind of crude. That's, that's, well, sometimes you know, but you know, but you know, Brother Mike. And I'm not going to put on a facade or, or a show. That's, or, right. that's right. It is what it is. Yeah. And I know of individuals where God told them not to pray for healing. So he does things that are really weird to us sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take away from who he is. Amen. Doesn't take away from who he is. Doesn't take away from what he's declared or his decree. So there was a waiting day period for these individuals. It came to pass in verse 2 after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. I'm going to bring up the uh, New King James translation uh, for clarity's sake on this. And in verse 3 of the New Kings, James, it says, And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, carrying it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. How many of us know, but we know, but we know, there have been times that the Holy Ghost has spoken to us to do something or change something and we knew it but for whatever reasons being we just seem just didn't seem to be able to to cross that line to step out of our comfort zone to that happen to anybody in this house yeah. Amen. there was a reason why that the man of god under the unction of the spirit and the Ark of the Covenant was the representation of God. It represented the presence of God. And in this particular time, not everybody could come into the presence of God. It's not like today. Yeah. You know, can you imagine that, <coughs> let's say only I was able to come into the presence of God for you? We, we couldn't wrap our minds around. But that's not how it is. It's whosoever will. And thank God he's given us his spirit the resident Holy Ghost Spirit inside of us that allows us to connect with Him. And, I mean, we, we make it so hard, you know. It saddens me that people don't pray in the Spirit. And they don't, they, they don't allow the, that river of living water that acts as a, a cleansing power and an encouraging power. And it, it just, it does so many things. 
we listen to, uh, you know, Saturday on the radio, we listen to, you know, uh, the holistic hotline and they recommend taking probiotics sometimes and other things people call up and they say, well, I got this going on and that going on. And I was told this and I was told that. And, and, and the people, no, 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 you, do, you don't want to do that. But if you try this and take this and so on and so forth, and there's things that they encourage you, you know, to take. And some of the things that they say, they say, but it's not going to happen overnight. You're not just going to take one tablet or one dose or whatever and be okay. It's a process of time. Your body, it's got to build into your body. It's got to, you know, do its thing. And then you'll start to notice some, some change. And, and sometimes, you know, when God tells us to, to move and do something, we're hesitant to do it. And that hesitancy doesn't come from Him. And I'm convinced it doesn't always come from the adversary. The adversary will get us to doubt the Word of God. The adversary will lie to us and make us uh, try to steal our faith or try to uh, prevent us from doing what we know God wants us to do. But the bottom line is, is that the adversary has no power over a Holy Ghost-filled child of God. That's right. And if I will allow the Holy Ghost to do what the Holy Ghost wants to do in me and by me and through me, if I can just understand that all I have to do is, is start to, to focus that way. I tell them all the time, Brother Bobby, I, I don't know what to do many times. Yes. I have no clue what to do. Uh -huh. But I tell them I'm willing to try it. I'm willing to do it. Yeah. You give me direction. You tell me where to put my feet. What, what, what to do and I'll, I'll, right. and I'll do it. Yeah. And many, many times I find that that's the only expectation God has is that we obey Him yes. and we follow Him and we do what he instructs us to do. Amen. And if we will do that, it opens up Amen. a whole, maybe it's just me, it opens up a whole new oh, sure relationship yes. with Jesus. Yep. And all of a sudden you start recognizing the unction of the Spirit. You you recognize his nudge. He can speak now and you don't have to second guess. It's me, it's him, it's yes. me, it's him. Yes. It's him. No, that's him. I recognize that voice. And you start to step out in faith. And God begins to honor your faith and back up his word of what he says. And all of a sudden things start happening. There was a reason why Joshua said, when you see that ark, you need to go after it. And I'm here to say in 2023 is God, whether it's moving in a service here or moving when you're out and about or moving in your prayer time or whatever it is. When you sense that God, there's something happening here. There's a there's a, a poking that's going on in in my Holy Ghost. Just respond to it. Just respond to it, and see what the Lord will do. Verse four it says, "Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure." So he tells them to when you see the covenant and the priest going down the road with the covenant. Don't go running up to it. Now, right away, my mind goes to, well, you know, the, it's true, you know, man. He told them not to come near the mountain when uh, he first started this thing off with them. And and uh, nobody should touch, can touch, or come into the presence of God. So now that must have be, been what he's talking about. But it's not what he was talking about. Sister Julie, do you know what the 2,000 cubits? It's about a half a mile. Think about that. When you see my covenant, my presence going down the road, don't go running after it. Don't go, go, don't go up to near it. And it's a half a mile down the road. And it's like, what? Half a mile down the road? Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it. Why? Why shouldn't I come near it? that you may know the way by which you must go. You know, there's sometimes you ever, you ever be so close to something that you lose the peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes somebody tries to sneak up to you and they're trying to be as quiet as they can, but through your peripheral vision, you see them coming. <coughs> and there's sometimes we have, we focus so much on life or a problem or what we are or what we're not who we are or who we're not, that we miss 
the perception of what God's trying to do with us, what God's trying to say to us. And if everybody, if all those, from what I, I've never really know how many, I think I've heard up to 3 million people are getting ready to do their thing. If everybody just ran up to the covenant, to the Ark of the Covenant in one shot, there would be people that back there that wouldn't even see it. They wouldn't even be able to come next to it. Yeah. So God wanted enough distance so that everybody that was looking and everybody that wanted to pursue could see the presence of God and see where God is instructing. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't make a difference whether you're a licensed minister of the United Pentecostal Church, whether you've been in the, in the church for one day or, or 15 years. If you have the Holy Ghost and you've obeyed the gospel and you're, you're being led or desire to be led of the Spirit, God is going to give you and I the opportunity to be led of the Spirit. That's right. But it's going to be our mouth. That's right. It's going to be our intellectual part of us, mm -hmm. the knowledge part of us, the desire part of us. We're going to have to, you know, people that pray in, in silence. I wish there was some way I could communicate to you that, you know, when you pray, there's no way under God's son that you and I would be able to have a conversation if you and I tried to have a conversation in silence. That's it right. will not that's happen. Right. That's right. And you might say, well, that's how I am. That's, that's me. That's my personality. I guarantee you in life, if something got you upset or there was a passion or an emotion rise up within, I guarantee something came out of your mouth. How much do you say, well, you mean to tell me I've got to, I've got to talk to God? Yes, yeah, yes, you have to talk to God. But yeah. more importantly, sometimes it helps when my ears hear what's coming out of my mouth. Yes. Praise God. As I'm singing the songs and, and uh, that God, he's, he can break every chain. And I'm saying it with my mouth or, or uh, he's forever Amen. faithful or, or I'm a friend of God. <laughs> It's impossible, it is impossible for God to be able to use us in this hour without us speaking into the atmosphere. Jesus, right. just Jesus walked and he said, let there be light. He did, he did this, he did, you know, stretch forth your hand or, or uh, you know, hey, you got any fish, you got some bread or whatever. I mean, he spoke things into the atmosphere, into the environment of darkness, and the miraculous took place. It's not going to be any different with you and I. Amen. And I believe there are scriptures that we can stand upon that talk about uh, speaking. I mean, the gifts of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy. They're gifts, they're speaking gifts. I can't expect to operate with God if I never open my mouth. And, and when you pray in the Spirit, the Spirit is praying into the atmosphere. Angels hear what you say. Mm -hmm. They wait for the command of God to flow through you in your voice so they know what to do as God instructs them and God sends them. It's not confusing at all. Because if I called upon any one of you right now and told you to talk about any particular subject that I felt you knew, you'd be able to stand up and talk about the subject that I thought you would knew. And the only way that would be communicated is by opening your mouth and speaking it. Amen. God's designed words and, and speaking. I mean, he can read our minds. And yes, the scripture says before we speak, he knows what we're going to say. Or he hears. And there's a move of God, a sovereign, sovereign move of God that we have never, I don't care how long you've been walking with the Lord, a sovereign move of God is going to take place. And it's going to take place in, uh, in increments right now. And if I'm not listening, and if I'm not pursuing, 
If I'm so close to the world that I lose my peripheral vision, if I'm so close to my weaknesses that I lose the peripheral vision, if I'm so close to the, to the, to the things that distract and things that prevent me from being what God wants me to be, if things have gotten in my, my life, if my, I've allowed the oil in my lamp to go down and, you know, it's, it's, Sometimes I say to him, I can't put it into words. Oh, Jesus. But there's a fire down in my, my bones yes. that wants to cry out. Yes. Yes. And we think God's going to make a fool of us. Or we think, you know, if we start saying something that we're going to be foolish. Because, again, we're not looking at him or his ability. We're looking at ourselves. We're looking at our personalities. We're looking at who we are. And I don't know about you, but God does not want me to be who I am. Mm -hmm. I got enough faults without me trying to use my faults to justify yes. that He can or cannot do something. Yes, yes. Sometimes that's hard. Don't come near it, He said, that you may know the way by which you must go. God is moving, but right now it seems He's moving in a distance. Sadly, we've regulated only a certain few can be used by God. Only a certain few can operate in the Spirit. It's not for everybody. I just come and sit in a church service and that is so far from the truth. You cut your big toe off and see how far you get. It's a part of your body. It might be curled up. It might look ugly. Your toenails may be needing cut. But that toe is a big part of balancing your, you yes. and giving you the ability. You cut your thumbs off and see how good you are able to grab things. It's part of your body. You and I are part of a body. We're only a small, intricate part of the worldwide body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. And He's my friend. And He'll break every chain, every hindrance. And He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. And the reason why that distance has to be there. At the end of verse 4, hear what it says. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know, hear it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not, for you have not passed this way before. Mm -hmm. But that's so contrary, Pastor. You would think he'd want to show me and think he'd, he'd want me to be up close and personal. But if you're so close, you're not going to be, you're not going to see the steps you need to take. If you're too close, you're not going to see what's on your left and what's on your right. You see, Joshua was told, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right, relative to his law. And as you and I walk in this hour that we're walking in, there's a lot of distractions to the left, to the right, behind us, forward. It's there's a lot of stuff going on that, that is distracting and trying to hinder us from being the people of God that He's called us to be. But when I see Him from a distance, from the distance of Word, from the distance in prayer, from the distance in spirit, I, I, there's something about that, that vision that I have. That I can tell what's on the left. I can tell what's on the right. I, I can walk and, and, and not bump into anything. And, I, and, and it's like... Okay, Lord, I've never been down this road before. I've never tried this before. What do you want me to do, Jesus? Which way do you want me to go, Lord? Well, you're kind of close. I can't show you. Many times our comfort zone boxes us in where even God can't get in. Verse 5, Joshua said to the people, 
sanctify. Sanctify yourself. Separate yourself. Consecrate yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders amongst you. Praise God. Oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus name. Praise be to God. If you knew tomorrow that the Lord was going to do wonders amongst us, would you want to be a participant of that? Would you be able to be a participant of that? I'm convinced that we have settled for Brother Cyril, we have settled for so much less than what God wants to give us. We have. We haven't turned our world upside down is because we have settled for so much less than what God had planned for us and has plans for us. As we stand this afternoon, Joshua in verse 9 says to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now therefore take for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe. You know the story of the twelve stones that they took out of the middle of the Jordan River and made a, mm -hmm. an altar, something that could be referenced down the road. Yes. God always prepares his people, his church, for the events yes. that he allows to unfold that are, going to, that are going to fulfill his will. But when I, when I'm fixated on my will and fixated on who, who I am or who I'm not, what I can do, what I can't do, what I'm incapable, if I'm looking at my weaknesses and I'm looking at the impossibilities, then it paralyzes him where he now has to go to someone else and tries to get somebody else to do what he's asking them to do. And God has spent since the beginning of time trying to convince man who he is what he has said, what he has declared. And I appreciate this group of people that I'm speaking to because we know the word, we believe the word, we walk in the word, we're sold on the word. And God is saying and going to say to many of us, if not all of us in 2023, it's time for you to change. Thank you. Amen. It's time for you to change. It's time for you to take me at my word. And I can stand before you right now and I have no clue what he's going to do, how he's going to do it, when he's going to say it. But I'm convinced by my knowledge of scripture and by the direction that he has spoken to me about and has sent me in, I'm convinced that he is more than capable of fulfilling his will and fulfilling his purpose. Amen. So I wait upon him and I renew my strength. Thank you, Jesus. I spend time in prayer. 
I spend time in his word. I spend time speaking to him, talking with him throughout the day. Amen. I want to hear him, Brother Bobby. I want to know him. God's got a plan. Yes. God's got a plan. And I'm, I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost the days of resisting that plan. It was like, was it Andrew? He said when he, there was a need for the people to be fed, they'd been out all day or whatever. And, and, uh, and you know, they, it was a long trip back to the city. You know, Man, we've got to feed these people. You know, mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? He, I think it was Andrew. He looked at it and said, well, what do you got? What do you got? Yes. Well, there's a kid here. He's got a, a couple of loaves and some fish. And, and what was Jesus' response to that? You, you, you feed him. You feed him. You feed him. I wonder. Hmm. That's good. If while you're in prayer. That's good, man. Oh God, I want to do your will. Oh God, I want to do your will. Oh, that's good. God, I want to do your will. God, use me in my your Lord, kingdom. Lord. Lord, yes. Hallelujah. That's good preaching. And all of a sudden the voice goes. Right on. Go knock on the door of your boss's office and tell him Jesus says thus and so. Mm -hmm. Lord. Go down to City Hall and ask for audience with the mayor mm -hmm. because you have a word from God for him. Tell that cashier you have a word. Oh my Lord, that's good. From God for her. That's right, preacher. Amen. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's good. Jesus, yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus, yes, Lord. Would you lift your voice to him? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. God always leaves a space between us and him. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh, we like to be real close. Glory to your name, Jesus. There's a need to draw near to Him. Don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand what the Holy Ghost is saying. But there's always a space before He moves, before He stretches forth His hand, before He speaks, there's always a space. And He waits upon us and we wait upon Him. And He speaks to us and we speak back to Him and it just goes back and forth, back and forth. And the weeks go by and the months Praise go Lord by Jesus. and the years go by Hallelujah. and we're still asking and he's Hallelujah. still speaking Hallelujah. and we're still talking and he's still listening oh, and Jesus oh it just goes on and thank on thank you but Lord thank you Lord hear me friend the night is far spent and the day is at him Praise you, Jesus it's time to change it's oh, time to take off some things it's time to to, to look to him and draw near to him in a, in a way and in a fashion where he can reach at any moment. He can speak at any moment. He can open a door for us to walk through without us fearing, without us falling apart. We don't have to figure him out. We don't put him in a box. We don't base him on what other people say or what other people do. My Lord and my Thank God. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord and my God. I katara ma soru In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus name, Lord. In Jesus name, Lord. I'm excited for 2023. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord Jesus. My God, my God. Jeremiah said, I'm not going to speak it anymore. Forget this. Come on. That's right, preacher. I could Mm -hmm. I couldn't keep quiet. Yeah. I had to tell somebody. Had that fire shut up in his bones. Had that fire shut up yeah. in his bones. Oh, Father in heaven, I thank you, Jesus, for your touch right now. And I pray, God, that those that have ears to hear, that your voice would penetrate, Lord Jesus, and the seed of word would germinate inside of our hearts. 
you would Thank touch you our minds with a clarity today. and a vision, Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, to be able to Lord, see some things hearts, that are taking place in the Long spirit realm, my Lord. Things, oh, God. Oh, oh, we don't have to worry, Lord Jesus. We only hear us of your word. Do us of your word today, Lord Jesus. Oh, mighty God, in your name, our eyes upon you. Arise are upon your presence. We're walking in a time that we have never walked before. We're walking in a way we've never walked before, Lord Jesus. And our focus needs to be on you, my God. Our only hope. But we pray in Jesus' name that the anointing would destroy the yoke. We pray in Jesus' name that we would receive your peace that passes all understanding. Take away the doubts from our minds, the fear from our spirits, Lord Jesus. Let us walk with the boldness of understanding of who you are and who you see us as. That you do, in fact, love us, Lord Jesus. And things do, in fact, work together for you. You see things, though they be not as though they were, my God. In Jesus' name. We don't want to provoke you, Lord Jesus, like the children of Israel provoked you in the days of old. We want to rest in your spirit, my God. We want to walk in your spirit, my God. Oh, we're citizens of a new country. We're citizens of a new land, my Jesus. We know you, Lord. We know you. Every one of us know you, Father. In a depth and at a level, Lord Jesus, that you have brought us to up to this point. And you've done it, Lord, not just for the sake of wasting our time of yours. You've done it with purpose, my God. And we want to be aware of that purpose. We want to be aware of the time that it is, Lord Jesus Christ. They all slumbered Jesus, and slept when the cry us, came Lord, forth Jesus. and the bridegroom came. I don't want to scramble in this last day. Hallelujah, I don't want to scramble for some oil. I don't want to scramble to pray. I don't want to scramble to try to hear your voice when the time Lord, comes where I need to hear your voice. And I pray in Jesus' name that your quickened word would break every yoke, tear down every stronghold, every lie of the devil, Lord Jesus, every lie of this flesh, my God. We would see you as you see us, Lord, a people called by your name, a people chosen by you for this hour. We are the church of the living God, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Randa ye in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus name, we appreciate you so much, Lord. We give you all of the praise Hallelujah. and glory. 